Hello everyone, my name is Eden, this is Tallulah, and today we're covering part one on a series of how to earn a pigeon's trust. Now why you'd want to put the time and energy into earning a pigeon's trust is rather self-explanatory, in that if you want to have a relationship with one, you can't really do that with a bird that's terrified of you. And even if your goal isn't to become best friends with them, you still need to be able to get close enough to feed, water, clean their cage, take them to the vet, those kind of things. So being able to interact with the bird without them being fearful is really important. Not to mention that if you're going to be sharing your life and home with an animal, you want to be able to get along with them. And if they're going to be living with you for the rest of their life, that life should be well spent. And it's really hard for them to live that life to the fullest if they're terrified of you the whole time. Luckily enough, because pigeons are a domesticated species, even if it's an individual bird that has never come in contact with humans before, or was feral, or was abused, they're still much easier to tame and have their trust built than with most other animals. Whereas with animals like parrots, if there's an individual that's a wild-caught adult, it's almost impossible that they're ever going to truly trust or get along with humans. While as Tallulah is a really good example of a pigeon that was adopted as an adult from a abusive, neglectful life where she was not at all used to humans at all handling them, and if she was handled it was clearly very cruelly because she was very scared of humans and hands and just everything to do with people. And it's pretty clear to see that that's no longer the case. Of course, there's lots of different ways of doing the same thing. These are just the methods that I've accumulated over working with lots of different animals, including lots of different birds, and that I was able to use with Tallulah when she came into my life about two years ago. My hope is you'll be able to find some tactics in this series that will be applicable and useful for you and your bird situation. On that same train of thought, which parts of this series are going to be of most use to you, which parts you'll be able to just skip over, and which parts, like where it's best for you to start, will all vary depending on your individual bird and circumstances. If you have a baby that was hand raised, clearly most of this will be very, very easy as they're probably already used to people. Yeah. If you have an adult that you recently adopted that is terrified of humans and has never had positive interactions with them, then you're gonna have to take a lot longer. Even if you have a bird that you get along with quite well or you've made quite a bit of progress with, I do recommend just starting from the beginning and working your way through. You can just pick and choose what parts that you actually need, but there are some things that I talk about only in one section where it's most applicable in an effort to not just repeat myself and have the videos be stupidly long. So in order to make sure that you're not missing any crucial steps, I do recommend just at least skimming through and ensuring that you're not missing anything that would make it progress faster. And while the goal is that this shouldn't take the bird's entire lifetime, patience is one of the most important parts of this entire process. Be sure to go at your bird's speed. If they're getting pushed too far, backtrack a bit, start where they're less comfortable. In the earlier stages, every time you go to work with your bird, I recommend backtracking to about halfway through your last session. For a quick example, if you're working on getting to be able to stand close to your bird without them being scared of you, when you come in, don't walk right up to where you were standing before and they were fine. Maybe start a little ways back because they're probably going to have forgotten a bit and that will be still pushing it. But if you push it too far, you'll get them too scared and you'll have to backdrop much farther. Depending on your bird's individual age, history, and personality, this could take days or this could take years. But going at your bird's speed is the best way to be successful. In this series, I'm going to be talking about things in order as if you were to have recently adopted a adult pigeon that is super scared of humans. Being that that's the most common way people adopt a pigeon is that they'll have a feral that was rescued, a adult that was a lost homing pigeon, or a fancy pigeon that was lost. Either way, an adult that's been abused by humans at some point in their history and is scared of them is the most common way that people, like is the most common bird and situation that people start off in. So we're going to be using that as the default and tweak it as needed. As such, the first thing we're going to be talking about is how to get the bird into the cage. So it's day one, you have your new bird or birds, and it's time to get them into their new home. In an effort to make this as stress-free as possible, we're going to do this very, very simply, just taking their kennel or box, whatever they came in, and putting it in the cage with the door open and leaving them be and letting them come out on their own time. Throughout this whole process, I do highly recommend avoiding doing any handling or interactions that are going to set you back and be really scary. The prime example being, I don't recommend when your bird first arrives, picking them up, grabbing them from the cage and putting them in and thinking that you're going to work through it later. While it's possible to come back from that, it does set you back, so it's better to just go with the least stressful way possible. That said, if it's a medical emergency or they have uh, parasites that need to be treated, they need to have medication given to them, anything like that, yes, absolutely. 
absolutely just go and handle them, do what you need to for their health. If they're not tame at all, it will be really scary for them being handled that way, especially if you have to restrain them to put medication down their throat or spray them down with some kind of parasite remover. All that will be really scary for them and it's not the best way to start your relationship off but you can come back from it and it's more important that they be healthy. Once again, Tallulah's a really good example of that. She was super sick and heavily parasite ridden when I first adopted her and the first many months were just me needing to treat her with all kinds of things, put her in kennels, take her to vets over and over again. Like she had a very, very scary, stressful introduction to my household. Yeah, you did. It was not great. No. It was not great. So we totally had that situation where it is the worst possible introduction to your house. I was the really scary new person who's doing all the scary, horrible things to her. That was how she met me. That was our first interaction. And it definitely set us back. But if you have a situation like that, just remember the most important thing is to get them healthy. You can work through the other stuff during if they're feeling well enough and most importantly after it's all done. Once you've gotten to the other side, it is absolutely possible to come back from being that scared person. So if that's your situation as well, don't worry. You can still work through it. You can still develop a relationship and you can still earn their trust. It'll just take some time. So once you have your new bird in the cage or aviary, it's time to work on the next step. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to say cage for simplicity's sake. I'm also likely going to use singular terms because that's just what I'm most used to. Something that I highly recommend right off the bat is that when you're getting your new bird, have their space set up well before you go to pick them up. The quicker you can get them back to your house and settled into their new home, the better. And you really don't want to have to be fiddling around with their space once they're in it on the first day. Have it fully set up to toys, beds, food, water, all that before you even put the bird in. A quick tip for when you're setting up your cage, even if it's not the layout that you're going to want long term, when you first bring your bird home until they get comfortable enough with you interacting with their space and being close to them, I highly recommend putting the food and water right in front of the door so you can open it just a small crack, put your hand in, just pull the water and the food out. That way you can interact with them as little as possible. Because for the first little while, until they're comfortable and trust you not to grab and hurt them, it will, it will likely be very scary for them whenever you have to change the food and water. So you want to make that as little stress as possible. You don't want to be kicking yourself when you realize that you've put the food and water at the very far back corner of the cage and now you have to pretty much climb through their space past the terrified bird in order to get to it. So now that you've got your new bird into their home, it's time to gauge where they're at. It's likely that you're already going to have a feeling for this uh, after putting them into their new cage and bringing them home from wherever you got them. But that's a very high stress situation so you want to like re-establish that now that it's slightly more calmed down. After you've given your bird a chance to cool off and just be by themselves for a while, all you're going to do to start with is come into the room that their space is in and pay attention to their body language. And I did make a video entirely on body language in preparation for this series linked somewhere. So if you're not already familiar with bird body language, I recommend checking that out, that out so that you can get an idea of what you're looking for. And while you're standing in the, whatever the far the space is, just in the doorway, looking in, just take a look at the bird's body language and see how they're reacting to you being in the presence. If they seem pretty calm, then slowly and calmly walk closer. And you're just gonna continue to do this. You're gonna walk a bit closer, pause, pay attention to how they're reacting, and just see how close you can get. You don't want to go until they totally freak out. Like if you get to the point where they like, spaz, start flapping and try and run away and hide in the corner of their cage, you've gone too far. So you want to stop before, just before you hit that point, just on the edge of their comfort, when they're still moderately okay with it, but also not just completely sitting within their comfort zone because then there's not going to be any growth there. Some birds will be totally fine with you standing directly outside their cage right off the bat. Other birds are going to find your very presence absolutely horrifying and you're going to have to very slowly work your way across the room. If that's the case, then you're just going to do that. Come in, come as close as you can before it gets too much for them. Stop, don't look at them, just stand there. Don't fiddle around with your hands too much because hands are likely going to be what they fear the most because if they've been abused in the past, it's going to be via human hands. Hands are going to be what is the scary thing. Just think of a cat. You meet a new cat, you don't trust it, it's kind of hissing at you. You're going to keep an eye on its claws because that's how it'll hurt you if it chooses to. So just stand there nice and calmly, maybe talk to it softly, don't stare them down, no sudden movements. So this gesticulating thing I'm doing, 
don't do that. Tell them a story, but leave the hand movements to another time. When they're starting to seem either like they're maintaining that same level of comfort or discomfort, you're going to just hang out there for a bit and then slowly work your way back. And you can just come back into their space and do that on a semi-regular basis. The more times a day you're able to come in and do this, the faster it'll go. If you're only able to come and do this whole thing once or twice a day, it will take quite a bit longer. Ideally, you want to be able to do it a whole bunch throughout the first day. That way, by the time you're needing to feed and water them, you standing near their cage is not scary anymore. Once you get to the point that you can stand close to your bird's cage and they show signs of being comfortable with that, you're just gonna normalize it. If you have a couch next to the cage, just hang out there. If you don't, put a chair beside their cage. Just do some work. Maybe watch a movie, do some work on your computer, read a book, whatever it is that you want to spend your time doing. Just do that close to them. By just spending time in their presence, they're going to get used to you being there. They're also going to realize as that time continues to stretch on that you're not going to suddenly hurt them. You've been there for a while. You're still not trying to hurt them. And that will slowly make them more and more comfortable. One of the best signs that they've gotten really used to you being nearby is if you can be close to their cage doing whatever you're doing and they are preening or napping. If the bird's just sitting there preening then they at least trust you in that moment not to try and eat them because they're going to be hiding their head and their feathers and closing their eyes in order to be doing that. They're going to be really focused so they have to at least think for the most part you're unlikely to try and eat them. Now before I wrap up this video there is one more thing that I want to quickly touch on there, this is a pretty big conversation. I think I'm going to make a full video just talking about my thoughts on this topic at a later date. Um, but to make this video not be too long, I'm just going to summarize it here. If you have a new pigeon, it is very likely that you will have heard or have been recommended to take your new bird, pick them up, pin their wings and legs down, wrap them in a towel, and sit with them restrained in the towel, petting their head until they get used to you. And to do this multiple times a day, every day until they like you. I highly, highly, highly recommend not doing this. To put it simply, if you choose that method to get the bird used to you, you're going to not be earning their trust. You'll be teaching them that they can't fight you, so there's no point in trying. Which is not a great starting point if you want to actually have them trust you or like you or want to spend time with you. Thank you for the wing. Yes, it will take longer to establish a trusting relationship where they choose to interact with you, but so much better in the long run. And if the reason they're not wanting to interact with you is because they're scared of humans, by forcing them to, you're just another scary human who's making them do what you want. Which no one wants. That would suck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you have been doing this, like if you were, if you asked people how to befriend your pigeon and you're recommended to do this and you've been doing it, it is still possible to reestablish a good relationship. It will have, um, it's very likely you're going to have a similar situation to people who have to pin them down and put medications down their throat. It's going to be a similar level of, I don't trust you, you're scary, you're the person who makes me do the scary things. So it will likely take a bit of backtracking and a bit of extra time and effort in order for them to learn that you're not going to do that kind of thing. Unless it's for like a medical or an emergency reason. Which, on a side note, they're very forgiving of once you have an established relationship. I would like to think that pinning down a bird and forcing them to interact with you until they give up trying to get away is not something that you're going to be inclined to do. But enough people recommend it that it warrants its own mention here. I have heard people say that it is the best or only way to make an adult pigeon like to interact with you. All I can really say to that is that I have at no point done that with her. She's very clearly happy to interact with me. She seeks out interaction. Oh, he's preening. Good job. Good job. And I never did that. The only time I ever wrapped Luna towel was for medical reasons. And now that she's gotten to the point where she likes being wrapped in a towel, I do it because she likes it. You're going to have a much higher chance of having a healthy reciprocal relationship with that bird if you choose to take the time for them to come to you. I hope that video has been helpful to you. If it has, 
please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any recommendations of how to earn a patient's trust in the really early stages, drop them in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all like to see. If there's any other topics that you'd like me to cover in a video, leave this in the comments as well. In part two, we're going to talk about how to start getting a bird comfortable with interacting with your hands. We'll see you then.